Hello, welcome to the course on Analyzing and Processing for Music Applications. In the previous demonstration class, we analyzed the pitch, the fundamental frequency of several sounds, and that was the first step towards analyzing all the harmonics of a sound. And uh, this is what we're going to do in this uh, lecture. We're going to be using the SMS Tools uh, interface, the harmonic model mainly, to analyze the harmonics of uh, several sounds. So let's go to uh, the interface, okay, and let's start with the DFT. The DFT is a good uh, place to start because then we can analyze one single spectrum of a sound and decide about the appropriate parameters for analyzing a single spectrum. And we will start also with a sound that we know the fundamental frequency of and that is very stable, uh, like the sawtooth uh, waveform that... Uh, we can um, analyze and uh, let's first uh, listen to that okay that's an electronic sound very stable and uh, many harmonics so we have to decide uh, the window type the window size and the FFT size for the window type the in this sound is not such a big deal so let's start with for example the humming window that's a, a very a good starting point it's a window that has a a decent uh, main lobe but with a quite narrow uh, four beams and the side lobes are quite low it's uh, lower than uh, 40 decibels so now we have to decide what is the window size uh, that allows us to see the harmonics of this sound so for that basically we have to take four periods of the sound so we have to know the length of one period in samples and for that, we can just uh, go to IPython and, and divide uh, 44,100 by the frequency. It's 440 hertz. Okay. And that's 100 samples. And we need four times that. So we need uh, four times 100. So 400 samples would be a good choice. And we want an odd size window. At least for the face, it's uh, good to practice to to do that, so 401 samples, and for the FFT size, well, we will need quite a bit of zero padding, uh, especially once we detect the, the fundamental and the harmonics, so let's maybe, let's just put uh, uh, 2048 as the FFT size, and let's analyze kind of in the middle, 5, okay, so we can compute. Okay, so this is uh, the four periods that we started with of the sawtooth waveform. And uh, the harmonics uh, look uh, very nice. We see these main lobes of the, of the window, of the humming window, quite well uh, uh, separated. The face also looks quite appropriate, looks quite very flat at every uh, main lobe. And of course, the synthesize is uh, distorted by the analysis window that uh, we use, which was the humming window. Okay, so this is a starting point. So let's now go to the sinusoidal model to uh, check how the sinusoid would look in this sound. Again, let's take the sawtooth, let's choose a humming window, let's choose uh, these 401 uh, samples, uh, 2048, maybe let's even do more, let's do 4096 so that uh, we have even more zero padding and the interpolation works better. The magnitude threshold, the truth is that uh, these, uh, these uh, sinusoids are, don't go very much down, so minus 80 is plenty, and all these parameters look okay, we don't need that many sinusoids, let's put 100, it's uh, plenty of sinusoids. Um, and uh, in terms of the deviation from one uh, frame to the next, well, 10 hertz might be too little because of the, the measuring uh, possible errors. So let's uh, maybe let's put around uh, uh, 20 hertz at the very beginning, and this keeps uh, getting larger as it goes up according to this uh, slope. Okay, so let's compute that. Okay, and this is uh, what we get. So. Um, well, we're seeing uh, very clearly the horizontal lines corresponding to the harmonics, but we also see some lines here at the bottom, which correspond, I guess, to some side lobes. And we see some uh, kind of oscillations and some gaps in some of the, uh, of the sinusoids. 
That means that maybe we didn't have enough resolution to uh, uh, control this uh, allowed deviation one from one frame to the next. So maybe let's increase the window size uh, so to have more samples. Let's see, maybe 600. And uh, let's uh, allow this deviation to be even larger. Okay, and now let's see what happens. Okay, now we definitely see the, some very straight lines, uh, very nice, but we are seeing some uh, kind of other lines in between, the order the sign of the tracks. Clearly, they come from the side lobes. So this is one of the reasons why the harmonic model will be in handy. So let's use the same kind of parameters, but on the harmonic model. Okay, so let's open the sound, uh, the sawtooth, okay, and now let's use the same humming window, uh, 601 samples, uh, 496, and uh, the magnitude threshold, we don't need that much, uh, minus 80 is plenty, and here we have some parameters that relate to like the number of harmonics, clearly with 440, there will not be more than 50 harmonics, within the range going from zero to half the sampling rate. And we have to allow the range of fundamental frequencies to be uh, uh, enough for the 440 to be detected. So clearly we, we need to put, uh, let's say, a thousand hertz as the maximum fundamental frequency. And let's just leave the rest as they are. Uh, this is a, uh, an error a threshold for the uh, detection algorithm that we are using, which is the two-way mismatch and some deviation of the harmonic tracks that we allow. Um, anyway, so let's uh, just uh, use these values and see what happens. Okay, this is better than the previous one because we clearly only accepted the harmonics of the fundamental detected. So it identified the fundamental frequency and then uh, it just chose the peaks that are multiples of this fundamental frequency. The, the synthesized sound, let's listen to that. Well, and let's listen to the original. Well, it's, uh, it has uh, some distortion because basically we are not able to synthesize all the harmonics of the sawtooth. In fact, if we zoom in, we're going to see that it does not like a pure uh, sawtooth because uh, we have less uh, number of the, all the harmonics that are, are possible in a, in a sawtooth, which would be uh, up until the uh, half of the sampling rate. So this is why we don't see it as nice as the sawtooth of, that we started with, that is uh, basically perfect. But anyway, that's a pretty good for an analysis and a digital reconstruction of an electronic sound. Now let's uh, look, let's close all these and let's look uh, the analysis of a real signal. Okay, so then we can see how to work with uh, real sounds. So we'll start again with the, with the DFT and uh, let's start with the violin sound that we have around here. It's a violin and is the note B3. Okay, we can listen to that. Okay, so this is a lower pitch. Uh, so again, we have to uh, know the number of samples of a period. B3, uh, the number of hertz of, uh, of this uh, frequency is around 246 hertz. So the number of samples in a period will be, again, uh, if we uh, divide 44,100, divide by 246 hertz, that will give us the number of samples of one uh, period. And if we still use the, the, black, uh, the humming window, we would need to multiply by four. But maybe let's use another window. Let's use the, the Blackman window, which uh, will allow us to get rid of the side lobes much better, and we will need a bigger uh, window because we will need uh, six periods, so the, the, the um, number of beans of the Blackman window is uh, six, so we need to multiply by six. So we need at least 
1,075 samples. Okay, so in here, we will need 1,075 samples. That's good. That's an, an odd size. And for the FFT, again, we it's good to have a, a lot of um, zero padding. So let's have a 4096. And, uh, well, the middle of the sound, that would be okay, 0 0.5. And, uh, okay, let's analyze uh, this. Okay, so this is the violin sound. Well, interestingly enough here, the, the, the period in the time domain is not so easy to identify because, in fact, it's like two bumps per oscillation. Uh, so there is some, uh, like the, the higher harmonics are very loud, so the, the, the first uh, uh, periodicity is not as clear. But anyway, we see quite clearly the, in the frequency domain the harmonics, even though some are not so clear. Maybe even a bigger uh, window would be better. Okay, so let's go to the harmonic model and maybe choose an, even a bigger window. Let's uh, open again the violin sound. And instead of 1,075, let me use maybe 1,401, so quite a bit more. And again, let's use the Blackman window. And 496 is fine. The magnitude threshold, uh, minus 80, uh, that should be okay. The duration of, uh, the minimum duration of the tracks, 0.1. The number of harmonics, uh, 50, that should be fine. We have to, uh, again, have a range that allows for the harmonic, uh, uh, the fundamental frequency to be within that. So minus uh, 130 to 1,000 is fine. And uh, this error, um, maximum error using the two-way mismatch, uh, let's, let's try it, see what happens. Okay, so let's compute that. And that's, uh, okay, that's pretty good. This is the, the original sound. The, the harmonics are quite well detected. Of course, in the end, and some of the higher <coughs> are um, a little bit irregular because, uh, of course, the harmonics are not so stable. And the synthesize, let's listen to the synthesize of it. Sounds pretty good. And as an exercise to see how it really tracks the harmonics, let's change the number of harmonics. For example, let's just uh, use uh, five harmonics. So it will only analyze the first five harmonics. And let's see what it does. Okay, so it only found the first five harmonics. And we can listen to that. Yeah, okay, so it's much closer to a sinusoid because there is much fewer uh, sinusoids. And of course, uh, you can play around with these parameters uh, to get uh, different uh, controls and to set uh, different compromises. But that's uh, about it, what I wanted to say. So let's uh, go back to the slides. And uh, basically, in this, uh, in this lecture, we went over the, the SMS tools uh, interface uh, to analyze uh, an electronic sound, the sawtooth uh, sound and the violin sound. So hopefully that gave you an idea of uh, this harmonic analysis and what we can do with that. And uh, in the next class, uh, we will uh, work with a more complex sound, with a harmonic sound that changes in time. So we'll be able to go a little bit more deeply into this harmonic model and the SMS tools to uh, really analyze uh, a sound that varies in time and that uh, maybe can take advantage of uh, this model even more. So thank you very much and I hope to see you on next class.